Levin, radio's principled patriot. Call in now at 877-381-3811. We have my buddy Mort Klein on the air. He is uh, the chief muckety-muck over there at the Zionist Organization of America, or the ZOA, uh, which supports Israel as a uh, homeland for the Jews. Uh, Mort, how are you, sir? Uh, well, doing as best I can under uh, yeah, exactly. circumstances of this country at the moment. Or let's take a little uh, a little turn here because things happen under the radar uh, while all these other terrible things are going on. You have 19 Democratic United States senators threatening an independent and sovereign nation, Israel, that if they dare, dare to uh, return, right of return to parts of Judea and Samaria, which have been the Jewish ancestral homelands for 3,500 years or so. That they intend to uh, that they intend to punish Israel. Is that correct? That is correct. They they signed the resolution, which, by the way, today today was supported by Pelosi herself. <laughs> that if they that if Israel uh, announces sovereignty over small parts of Judea and Samaria and the Jordan Valley, where five hundred thousand Jews live, so they can be under Israeli law, they have threatened that this will uh, abrogate and harm U.S. Israel relations. Uh, despite the fact that international law, the Balfour Declaration, the San Remo Resolution, the League of Nations Covenant, the UN, have all made it clear under international law, this is Jewish land and always has been. And also, if Israel gives away this part of Judea and Samaria, the country will be nine miles wide. And the Jordan Valley is right next to Jordan. If Jordan is ever taken over by a hostile uh, Hamas-like terrorist regime, they can march right into Israel and cut Israel in half. So th- this would be a terrible situation for Israel if they would not apply sovereignty over this area and give it away to the Palestinian Arabs. And yet uh, these Democrats have uh, warned Israel not to do this, even though, of course, foreign policy is in the hands of the president, the executive branch, not in the hands of Congress. And by the way, this was promoted by the extremist George Soros-funded J Street. They pushed this very, very hard. So, uh, uh, obviously, you know, if they really are serious about Israel's security and supporting Israel, you don't pass this type of uh, resolution to, give, uh, to, to not apply sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. We Jews are called Jews because we are from Judea. The Arabs are from Arabia. This has been Jewish land for thousands of you, years. You know, Mark Klein, I'm sick and tired of this word annexation. <laughs> this is what I call the right of return. It's the right of return to these ancestral Jewish homelands. And they're not even get. It's about 30% of Judea and Samaria, where 500,000 Jews live. Correct. And the Jordan Valley area, that's never belonged. You know, the, the thing is, like, the West Bank. There is no West Bank. The Jordanians stole that land, controlled it for 19 years, and all of a sudden it's the West Bank. For 3,500 years it was Judea and Samaria. Now let me ask you something. I tried to find it in the Bible. Were the Palestinians in the Bible? Uh, Palestine was never a country. The Palestinians are Arabs. They changed the name to Palestinian to make it sound like they're a separate group of people. They are Arab Muslims. And uh, this land all over the Bible, was given, for those who believe in the Bible, was given by God to the Jews. Look, it's called the Promised Land. Who promised the land and to whom did he promise it? God promised it to the Jews. This is the area where Jewish Abraham walked, where Jewish King David, Jewish Joseph, Jewish Jacob, the Maccabees, Jewish kingdoms for thousands of years. This was never Arab land. Uh, And the the word Palestine is simply, uh, when the Romans captured Judea from the Jews, to stick it to the Jews, they named it after the Jewish enemy, the Philistines, so they called it Palestine. But there was never a country named Palestine. There was never any Palestinian kings or queens. Uh, So this has always been Jewish land never Palestinian Arab land. When Jordan controlled it for 19 years, they uh, took it illegally uh, in the 48 war. The UN never recognized it. And in 1988, King Hussein relinquished his control over it. So- all right, let me, let me read the names of, and they're all Democrats, who are now threatening. First of all, Israel's a separate country. Do these Democrats threaten any other countries this way? <laughs> Especially not the greatest ally America has, Israel. That's right. Never. Well, let's, let's read the names. Chris Murphy, 
of Connecticut, who was very upset with the president's call uh, to the president of Ukraine. Now he's threatening an ally. Tim Kaine of Virginia, Chris Van Hollen of Maryland, Brian Schatz of Hawaii, Patrick Leahy of Vermont, Dick Durbin of Illinois, Sherrod Brown of Ohio, Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, Tom Udall of New Mexico, Jeff Merkley of uh, Oregon, Ed Markey of Massachusetts, uh, Martin Heinrich, Heinrich of New Mexico, Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, uh, Gene Shaheen of New Hampshire, Tammy Duckworth of Illinois, Tom Carper of Delaware, Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, Bernie Sanders of Vermont, Patty Mary of Washington State, and now Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. And I'm going to tell you, Feinstein. go ahead. She, she, Diane Feinstein added her name. You Unbelievable. Know, California. Let, let, let me tell you something. If the Trump administration doesn't act quickly to support their own peace plan, to institute their own peace plan, which even enables the Palestinians to have their own state if they do some, you know, a real high bar. Stop terrorism. Stop killing Jews. Stop subsidizing the killing of Jews. You know, little stuff like that. Uh, uh, so the bar is quite low, but they're never going to meet it. Uh, they, they have an opportunity for their own state. I don't think it'll ever happen because I don't think uh, Abbas and Hamas have any intention of doing anything that's peaceful. Here's the thing. As the time goes on, the opposition builds and builds and builds in the Democrat Party, which has become quite anti-Israel, and elements are quite anti-Semitic. It builds in the European Union. It builds on the Security Council with Russia and China. I'm quite concerned. Are you not uh, more Klein, that, that this is taking a little bit too much time? Yes. This has to be done right away. Otherwise, as you just said, there'll be forces against the Jewish state building. Uh, I hope Netanyahu will move quickly in the next few weeks to declare sovereignty. And remember, statehood is not the issue. The Palestinian Arabs were offered a state three times in the last 20 years mm-hmm. on 97% of, of Judea and Samaria. They rejected it every time because it meant accepting Israel as a Jewish state. They won't Thank do goodness. It. They won't do it. So they don't even want a state. They want Israel's destruction. They were offered a state in 37 and 48 uh, in 2000, 2001, 2008, they said no every time. They don't want a state, and, and I love how Biden says if they, if they uh, declare sovereignty, it'll destroy the chances for peace. Well, Mr. Biden, what destroyed the chances for peace for 27 years when Israel was trying to negotiate with the Arabs and they refused to make peace? What destroyed the chances for peace then? Uh, so this is uh, just absurd. And by the way, the Palestinian Authority refused for 10 years now. They won't even sit down and negotiate with Israel. They don't want a state. And, and uh, in order to get a state, they have to recognize Israel as a Jewish state. They have to rescind the names of schools, streets, and sports teams and children's camps after Jew killers. And they pay Arabs $400 million a year in toto to pay Jews, to pay, to slay, to murder Jews. If you kill a Jew... You get a lifetime pension. The more Jews they kill, the bigger the pension. That's what the Palestinian Authority uh, gives uh, to, ins- to uh, ensure that people will keep killing Jews. It is Nazi-like. And, and yet, where's the Democratic Party condemning the Palestinian Authority for that? They're nowhere to be found. Well, it sounds like systematic uh, anti-Semitism among the Palestinian authorities. Maybe it's systemic, even. This is all Jew hatred, Otherwise, because if they wanted a state, they, would have, they could have had it six times in the last 80 years when they were offered it six different times. They're against the Jews having their own state. Uh, is, let me ask you this, Mark Klein, before I, I get cut off here. I don't know of another indigenous peoples, and that's what we're talking about. The Jews are indigenous to these areas uh, 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 in the Middle East. Uh, I don't know another indigenous people that is so despised and attacked by the left whether it is, uh, in my opinion, my words, self-hating Jews that are funded by Soros, among other groups, hardcore leftists, whether it is Pelosi and the Democrat Party that's clearly uh, lurched uh, into the anti-Israel camp. And they all pretend, but for Netanyahu, you see, but for Netanyahu, we'd be able to work with the Israel. Netanyahu is a duly elected leader of a, of a sovereign nation, and he's been there a long time. The, obviously, the Israeli people want him there. But they didn't make peace when they had Perez, or Ehud Barak, or Ehud Olmert. When they were offered states, they said no. 
They, in fact, they never even made a counteroffer. They won't agree to a state if it means accepting Israel as a Jewish state. The goal is Israel's destruction and murdering Jews. It is not establishing a Palestinian state. That's clear. Well, I hope the administration uh, will give its assent so that uh, the Israelis can get this done, but the Israelis may have to do it without them. Israel's um, an independent country. They can declare sovereignty on their own. They do not need anyone's permission to declare that's sovereignty. That's true, Mark, but there are consequences for that. <laughs> and so you and I understand there's a risk in doing that, but when you weigh the, the, the risks, uh, in the end, they may only have one chance to do it, and in the end they're going to have to do it. Well, under the Trump plan... He's allowing, he's supporting Israel, announcing sovereignty over 30% of Judea and Samaria and the Jordan Valley. This is the time for Israel to do it when they have a president who understands the importance of holy land for the Jews and the importance of security for the state of Israel. If another president comes in, everything could change. I agree 100%. Let me ask you a question. If Donald Trump walked through the streets of Jerusalem, would he not be heralded as a hero? The Jews of Israel are in love with Donald Trump. All right, next question. 90% support and approval of Donald Trump in Israel. 90%. If Donald Trump were to work, walk through the streets of Ramallah, how would they treat him? Uh, he He'd be taking to... his life in his own hands. Right. He needs a major security battalion to protect him. He couldn't possibly do that. Too dangerous. Yeah. No, too dangerous. Mark Klein, you do a fantastic job. I'm a huge fan and supporter. ZOA, outstanding organization. Keep up the work, sir. Well, let me tell you, I worked for 20 years with the genius in chemistry, Linus Pauling, doing medical research as a biostatistician. Now I'm proud to be working with the genius in political analysis, and that is Mark Levin. Aren't my you honor. kind? My honor. Thank you. Thank you. It's my honor. Thank you, Mark. You take care of yourself. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. 